Hi everybody, just a quick note about this video. The video is made from 35 millimeter slides that I took back in the 1980s, 1987, 88 to be exact. And during that time, I was detailed as a National Park Service Ranger to Fort Matanzas National Monument, about 14 miles south of St. Augustine. And I was the resident ranger there. Uh, being the resident ranger there meant that I was pretty much the lead on the sea turtle nest relocation program that the Park Service had been running for a few years. So the video details the whole process from start to finish. Uh, one thing that I left out of the video, and I'm just going to say it here, is that in the late 1980s, it hadn't been that long since Florida had ended its legal sea turtle uh, egg hunting season. In other words, in the 1960s, when I was a kid and growing up in St. Augustine, in the early 60s, you could drive the beach at night, and if a sea turtle was laying her eggs, you were allowed to stop and take some portion of the eggs. I forget what the regulations are because I was a kid at the time, but it was very exciting. My family would do it. We would ride the beach uh, and we'd wait. We didn't eat the eggs. It just wasn't a thing in my family, but my parents were nature buffs and um, they would take us for the experience to watch a sea turtle laying her eggs. So I've seen a lot of sea turtles lay their eggs thanks to my parents doing that. Um, the, the harvest of the eggs thankfully ended legally sometime in the late 60s I believe. At the time in the 80s when this these pictures were taken sea turtle poaching was still a big deal. Um, I guess it still happens but at the time it hadn't been that long and old habits die hard and people had literally been eating eggs sea turtle eggs in St. Augustine for hundreds of years and so it was a problem and so moving the nest protected them from poachers but also from driving on the beach, which I do mention in the video. Anyhow, I just wanted to add that little bit in there and um, show you that the hat still fits, even if the face and the hair have changed. So enjoy the video. Um, it was one of the more special things I've ever done in my career. In December 1987, I left Fort Pulaski National Monument in Savannah, Georgia for a position as the resident ranger at Fort Matanzas National Monument in St. Augustine. It was a homecoming for me, a native son of St. Augustine. I had worked at Fort Matanzas as a seasonal ranger in the early 1980s. Back then, the permanent park staff was experimenting with relocating sea turtle nests. Those early attempts involved five-gallon buckets of sand and eggs that were kept inside the small Park Service garage at Fort Matanzas. That idea turned out to be a mistake. More on that later in the video. Here's the classic V-shaped crawl left by a female sea turtle. The circular disturbed area is where she worked to make her nest the night before. The female sea turtle comes ashore on a high tide, and while she works, the tide will begin to ebb. So typically, one half of the V is shorter than the other half. This is what I looked for on my early morning beach patrols. It was important to move the eggs within the first 24 hours to increase survivability of the hatchlings. The female turtles travel as far up the beach slope as possible for beginning to lay. Usually that means they're right up against the dune line, like this nest. Please note the full size shovel as a size reference in this picture. The female digs the nest with her rear flippers. The side to side movement of this process disturbs an area much larger than the actual nest, which is about the size of a five gallon bucket. So here's a question, where would you start looking for that small nest? And the answer is along the seaward edge of the disturbed area. The female faces the dunes as she digs, so her actual nest is somewhere along that ocean side. The shovel was only for efficient backfilling after the eggs have been extracted. All the digging in search of the eggs is done by hand. Step one was to probe fingers deep all along the search area, and then, if no eggs are encountered, I would remove that layer by hand. 
This process was repeated until you finally touched that first precious egg. This is the top of a column of eggs that will go down about 18 inches. At Fort Matanzas, the beach is a mix of sand and coquina shell. This mix makes the sand fluffy and nests here were often deeper than normal beach sand. This was the deepest nest that I had ever dug. If you're in uniform and digging a grave-sized trench in a public beach, you will attract attention. The eggs were removed and counted one at a time. Sand from the nest was first placed in the bucket and then eggs were added one at a time in the same orientation as they were in the nest. The reason for not turning the eggs was that the embryo attaches during the first 24 hours and if we turned it, the embryo might wind up in the air bubble that was inside the egg and then of course not survive. Not shown in this picture is the datasheet clipboard where each nest's information such as date, location, depth, number of eggs, etc. was recorded. This is me breaking protocol just this one time by letting someone touch an egg. These good folks lived on the beach and had called in this particular nest. Check out that video camera. I had one just like that. So what's next after nest extraction? At that point, it's off to the top secret nursery site. Although this picture makes it look not very secret, the actual nursery site was located where park visitors were not allowed and armored with wire hardware cloth to prevent raccoons and ghost crabs from eating the eggs. The Park Service maintenance crew did a great job building this structure. The roof consists of four movable panels and the floor is divided into two by two nest sites. At the hatchery with a fresh bucket of eggs, I used a post hole digger to recreate the turtle mama's nest hole. When the hole was ready, the eggs were loaded one at a time with no turning of the egg itself. A sea turtle nest is filled with eggs, not sand. Even though the photos I have shared showed a deeper nest, most are only covered by a foot or less of sand. Like other reptiles, sea turtle eggshells are flexible, not brittle. The dimples result from being packed closely inside the female turtle. Here's a completed human copy of a sea turtle nest, nicely mounted as mama would do. At this point, it's about a 55 day wait until hatching. The slight collapsing of the mound in this picture is a sign that the turtles are hatching down below. As they hatch and move, sand will begin to cave in along the sides of the hole and the young squirmy baby turtles will ride that sand elevator to the top. The hatchlings typically emerged at night and were discovered on early morning hatchery checks. We held them until that evening and then released them at sunset. The public was invited to watch them as they scurried down the beach to the safety of a dark sea. Early in this video, I mentioned that the park staff first relocated nest to buckets of sand in the park garage, and I mentioned that this turned out to be a mistake. The sex of sea turtles is determined by the average soil temperature during incubation in the nest. If temperatures average around 82, you wind up with all males. 88, females. For a mix of sex, which is what you really want, the temperature needs to be a mix of temperatures in between those two temperatures. In the shady coolness of the park garage, those early 1980s batches may have produced all male hatchlings. The later hatchery system shown in this video should have produced a more natural temperature range and hopefully, a natural sex ratio among the hatchlings. Along with my official National Park Service Ranger role in this project, I was also the Greenpeace Sea Turtle Patrol Coordinator for St. Johns County at this time. As such, I worked with volunteers who agreed to perform early morning patrols of their portion of St. Johns County beaches. Most of the relocated nests were found and reported by these good, dedicated people.
This is one of the many newsletters I pushed out to the Greenpeace Turtle Patrollers. The total number of hatchlings that year was over 3,000. We had about a 90% success rate. Of course, they didn't all survive to sexual maturity out there in the ocean, but some of them did. A sea turtle, a female sea turtle, takes about 20 years to reach sexual maturity. And that means that somewhere along St. John's County beaches in 2008, these turtles should have returned to lay their own eggs. Thank you.